Hello everyone, I am Tassa, and today I'm going to be going over the new Gems of War Troop of Daughter of Time. Very, very rarely do we cover an entire video just on a new Glory Troop, but this is actually the most insane man accumulator we've gotten in the last five years. Leprechaun was added in December 2018, so one month from now, five years ago. And this is the strongest man accumulator we have gotten since then, as far as how much the entire meta is going to basically be formed around it. Uh, we're going to be showing five teams in this video, and honestly, this doesn't even touch the surface of what it could possibly end up doing into the future. I just kind of wanted to show a few just right off the bat, just kind of see kind of in first impressions and overall what it could do. So what makes this thing so strong? It gets to create five hourglass gems, which will end up making it the second highest hourglass uh, creating troop, as well as with the highest one being the mythic that we get at the end of the season. That's not quite out yet. Uh, however, uh, it's going to be the most consistent one because on top of the five hourglass gems, it also gains an auto extra turn. So it is creating five yellow gems, which of course hourglass gems, you take them and you automatically gain an extra turn. At this current moment in time, there is no counter to hourglass gem. So you will automatically gain an extra turn. Even if your entire team is frozen, there is just no way to counter it at the moment. So you just take it, you're good to go, destroy it, explode it, anything. Uh, well, except for remove, I don't think remove works. But as long as you destroy it or explode it uh, or swipe it. Uh, you'll be good to go, get your auto extra turn, and of course get the mana. You're still getting yellow mana for it as well. On top of that, you also have freeze. So you'll be able to go freeze the enemy. So if you already took out all the hourglass gems and, you know, they're already frozen, well, they're just going to miss their turn anyway. So uh, you'll be able to get right back to your turn, even if you somehow drop your turn. And on top of all that, the auto extra turn is the main thing that puts it together. As you can just cast this, do some other kind of mana accumulator, get them all destroyed, and you're just good to go. So you're normally going to want to pair with at least, uh, well, obviously one damage source. Uh, one thing that can end up destroying uh, these hourglass gems and then just something else either for more damage or for more mana so uh, on top of that it also has a 50 percent chance to convert a yellow gem to an hourglass gem when its turn begins there are a couple trips that end up getting this but this is pretty nice just for having a starting hourglass gem just be able to get your little bit of extra guaranteed extra turn before you've really gotten everything started so you might be able to potentially do this on a turn one extra turn 50 percent of the time so very nice anyways main thing of this video let's go and show five teams these are more so first impression teams uh, obviously as we have more time to go and mess around with this this is like literally one hour after the patch came out so we have not had much time to experiment however this one's definitely my favorite so far the good old bork uh benefits quite a bit from being yellow as well it's actually pure yellow too so yellow guild war day or yellow um uh gosh what do you call it tower of doom it can also be used for Anyways, right off the bat, we just want to get our little bit of mana there. Uh, go cast Bork. Uh, as you can see right there, we just got an Hourglass Gem, and uh, then we get an extra turn from it. And now we just keep cycling until forever. So we go take out whatever the biggest threat is, throw some damage down here and there. Oh yeah, Mr. Alice doesn't have mana yet. Well, we can fix that. Uh, we go throw the Hourglass Gem, then go some Bork, then throw down another Rope Dart, get everything cleared. Uh, one really nice synergy with Rope Dart into it as well. Whenever uh, We actually have a couple teams that are kind of set up like this, but in different ways. But um, you can use Rope Dart to reposition when you do a splash damage. This will make sure that the splash damage can actually hit the two adjacent uh, targets. So instead of having them like a gap where you won't be able to hit in between, you can simply move them next to each other. Like for example, if we end up getting a gap here, let's see if we can actually show it. Oh, okay, good, perfect. This is exactly what I want to show. So right, as you can see right here, they are away from each other. So if you tried using splash damage, you would not get any value from the splash damage. If they could stop dying, um, that would end up Rope Darting it to first slot. Now they would both be next to each other, and then that would allow your splash damage to hit, assuming they had higher durability to actually survive. But there we go, and they just die. And uh, that's the first one, definitely my favorite. Hey, we get paid off with Anisha. Gosh, <laughs> we haven't been doing much Explore 12, but uh, instantly paid off with Anisha. Very nice. Anyways, next, Infernus Skull. So as many of you know, uh, Zolgoth has pretty much been the meta for a very, very, very long time, and honestly probably still is, uh, when it comes to triple damage uh, burning skulls. Just because it has the burn very easily, it has the um, skulls to go with it, and just everything just ends up synergizing very, very well. However, uh, Infernus, of course, was kind of the original mass burner, as far as being a very viable option that can end up doing so. And we can kind of do that again. Uh, obviously, there are plenty of hero classes that have triple damage burning. In this case, we're using Hierophant, mostly for the cleanse on um, extra turn. Uh, of course, as before, five more. You can't just take an hourglass and have it count. As to specifically be four more gems, as are many mechanics like that one. But uh, whenever we end up doing, it automatically cleanses our hero. So that mostly just makes sure we don't get countered by freeze. More importantly, entangle. Stuff like that. 
But as you can see, we have the hourglass gems ready to go, so we simply just go for Merilith, and we're going to have a similar premise where we just keep going back and forth with these two. Unfortunately, uh, we did not get full mana for the hourglass there, so we are going to need to go uh, get our mana back. Uh, this team does double block it, so we do need to get a little bit up. I think casting Rope Dart there is actually making it uh, a little harder to end up getting it up there, but we just end up doing that. Rope Dart them uh, accordingly. Whenever we want to go take a Skull, we will have triple damage Skull. Uh, of course, we don't have a way to create Skulls with this team, but for the most part, that shouldn't matter too, too much. Uh, and the main thing that we're trying to do here is uh, rope dart all of them so we can get them into Infernus range. Kill them out that way. Go for our little bit of Merilith for that last little bit of mana. And uh, we're pretty much just good to go. We're going to see if we can get our last little bit of Hourglass there so we can get that up again. So we get our guarantee extra turn. With that 5 explode, he should pretty much always be hitting one of those Hourglass gems. As I say that, we didn't hit one of the Hourglass gems. <laughs> I guess I will have it ever so occasionally. But of course, with a Mass Destroyer like Merilith or Golfa, uh, even like Target Explodes, like anything that has a single um, Target Explode, like, you know, just one singular gem, like a 3x3. Three three. Those are very consistent now. We actually showed on this final team here for the very uh, cheap one. We actually end up using the one explode off of uh, Vothernax. But we'll get to him in a moment. Well, I don't know. We're talking about him right now. Let's go use him. So, of course, uh, one thing that you can end up using with this is basically make every troop into a goblin rocket or similar equivalents. Uh, of course, those troops end up, or specifically goblin rocket, he is a 3x3 three three explode and then gains auto extra turn. However, a lot of these that do have a exploded gem, they do not have extra turn. Goblin Rock is the only one in the game that naturally has one uh, that is like that. However, now you can create all of them into one by simply going and getting our mana accumulation here, getting our hourglass gem down, and now all we have to do is go explode a 3x3 three three and try setting it up into a follow-up. So right here, we can end up doing uh, something like this. Get our hourglass, get our other hourglass, take it for even more hourglass, get all of our mana because the hourglasses are in play. We then go put more hourglass, and you kind of stagger hourglasses. Not something we've actually done with uh, any of these teams up to this point. But, of course, uh, you can stagger them as much as you want. Uh, as long as you go and uh, make sure you end up taking one. Uh, you do need to make sure you still get all of your mana, of course. But we can simply do this to go take all of our blue right over there. Uh, we still have some of these hourglasses in play. Of course, the higher the amount of destroy on your Thrall or Mash Destroy equivalents, the better. Uh, however, even with lower destroy, as long as you can destroy about half the board, you're pretty consistently with five hourglass gems on the board. Uh, even if you only destroy 32, you have a very high probability that you're going to destroy the ball. We did miss once with that one Infernus with the 5 explode. But for the most part, you're going to be hitting like pretty much every single time. Uh, oops, I didn't do that right, but it still ends up working exactly how we need it. So hey, it worked out in the end. Uh, also, do keep in mind, uh, the freeze gems can overwrite the hourglass. The hourglass can overwrite the freeze. So on and so forth. That still hasn't been changed. Not sure if they're ever going to change that. Uh, but as it currently stands, it is unfortunately still the case. Uh, this team is going to be a little bit slower, but it is low rarity. Everything on this team is epic rarity and below. Um, with the uh, highest two rarity things being the Daughter of Time itself being epic rarity. And of course, our main damage source of the Dragon being a uh, epic rarity troop. And uh, yeah, we just keep shuffling our mana back and forth and it'll just keep going. A troop that would normally never have access to infinite extra turn now has access to infinite extra turn. Which is pretty much this troop in a nutshell. If anything has any amount of destroy, I'm talking even one single gem. Even Peasants, that has a 3 destroy, um, you can end up making into an infinite loop now. Of course, you wouldn't necessarily want to do that with something like Peasant. You'd want to make sure they have some kind of follow-up that's at least remotely usable. Uh, like at least this thing having like a little bit of an AoE going on with them. But yeah, you just make everything into an infinite now. Like literally everything that could destroy even a singular gem, uh, specifically a yellow gem, is now an infinite. And that is actually pretty relevant because with this next team, uh, we're going to be doing a um, Grey King. So, of course, Grey King does have Destroy, but it's Destroy based on a color. But we can still utilize that. Uh, we can end up doing it on Yellow in order to cash in on the Hourglass Gems while still cycling with everything else. It's probably not one of the better ways of necessarily doing it, but definitely is a way to do it and makes him a bit more loopable than he would normally be otherwise. Uh, initially, we won't have much of a loop, but we'll be able to go and just kind of target out all the Disables as we need and kind of just go from there, which is pretty much the main game plan. So, of course, we can end up creating Hourglass Gems, and with those Hourglass Gems, guess what we can target now? Yellow! And, of course, it just goes, and now we can just cycle his mana, go get Merilith up, go get all of our mana that way. Of course, he's creating blue as a secondary gem, too, so really good with anything that can end up utilizing blue. And now we just kind of keep clicking colors until uh, everything just ends up dying. Uh, so right here, we'll just go for a green. Probably not going to extra turn here, but we get a lot of value from it. And then we just go straight back into Hourglass Gems. And, of course, if we are giving up our turns, uh, the entire enemy team is going to be frozen, assuming they're not immune. And because they're going to be frozen, they can't take extra turn. Uh, even if we go and leave a, like an extra turn green, extra turn yellow, they're going to be frozen on it, so... Uh, they will end up ultimately uh, losing that turn. So let's go for our yellow. Keep staggering it. And uh, should be good to go. I'll just go get our little poke there. Keep getting our blue. Go for hourglass. Obviously having a mass destroyer. Very, very solid. 
uh, ends up making it so much easier. Do they share any color? I don't believe they do. Obviously, uh, this particular team does uh, benefit heavily if the entire enemy team is yellow, uh, as well as if they just share colors. Oh, there's not even any yellows yet. We already killed them all. <laughs> Wait, hold up. <laughs> That's fine, though. We just go for Hourglass. Uh, we have the Marilith for this point, too, uh, so we can end up chipping them down. Ideally, we'd be able to get a double here, but that's fine. We'll just go for the green. There's no way they could take that one hourglass, so we'll be fine. Um, actually, we'll just take it with Marilith then. Uh, go for the other thing and then just target onto uh, blue. We just created some blue. End up hitting it out and uh, we're good to go. But anyways, that is the new troop. Uh, it has so many build potentials. Let me go with the best one again. Uh, but yeah, this one's definitely my favorite by far. <laughs> I don't think it's close to be honest. This one's just so much fun. It has everything you basically need. Uh, other than like a leprechaun for start, uh, unfortunately it does get a slightly slow start, and by slow start I mean the slow start of, of standard these days, which it takes like two or three turns to get rolling, rather than like literally infinite zero turns. <laughs> but uh, once we get going, take that hourglass gem and boom, we have infinite now. Um, and yeah, the infinite possibilities, and I mean like true infinites, are so much easier now. Like we're in a true infinite right now. Um, we will never drop our turn at this point. All we have to do is just keep going and shuffling between uh, all three of these options. So we go to this, go throw down our damage, we then throw down our mana, we then mass mana accumulate, and now we rinse and repeat. We rope dart, we uh, do our mana, we do our uh, other mana, and rinse and repeat. And just keep doing this. We have some extra Marilith, uh, not Marilith, Mistralis, to end up uh, doing a little bit extra trip damage like we could do right now. And yeah, you just keep doing it over and over again. Go for this, go for this, infinite mana. And there's just so many team types that you can do with that now. Obviously, things that naturally have extra turns synergize really well with it, which is why Rope Dart Mistralis is my personal favorite, because um, this has extra turn, this gives this extra turn, this naturally has extra turn, and this naturally has extra turn. And on top of that, if you somehow lose your turn, you have enchant. Uh, so it just kind of covers everything. But yeah, very, very strong man accumulator. Best one we've gotten in the last five years. And I did double check. <laughs> 2018 December was uh, when we got Leprechaun, which was the last one of this caliber that we've ever gotten. Like a man accumulator that basically revolutionized everything. And yeah, this is a new one, Daughter of Time. Uh, of course, Leprechaun uh, still to this day actually holds up for that. There's still no other thing that can like mass explode the same way that Leprechaun does on turn one. That's why you see us using it on so many teams. And uh, Daughter of Time will now stand as a new version of it. But this time with Hourglass Gem, it can now form anything that normally isn't an infinite loop into an infinite loop team. Which is just absolutely insane. Uh, there's probably, like I'm pretty sure as far as true infinites, we had like a single digit probably prior to this patch. Uh, now it's in the hundreds. <laughs> Maybe even thousands, depending on what you consider as a different team. Uh, like, there is an insane amount of infinite loops that you can get. Like, anything that has even one destroy with any amount of follow-up is now an infinite loop into Daughter of Time, which is just absolutely insane. But yeah, that is Daughter of Time. If you have any team suggestions of your own uh, that you've been messing with, feel free to leave it in the comment section below, because I would love to hear what you guys are saying. And uh, we might need to make a part two of this, because, uh, yeah, this thing is so good. Hopefully it doesn't get nerfed. Uh, there's been a lot of troops in the past that seems like they might get nerfed. Uh, I'm not sure what will happen with Daughter of Time. Um, but even if they lower it down, like, let's say three and three, that's still really usable. Just the fact that it creates Hourglass in the auto extra turn, that alone is a lot to work with. But, uh, I don't know. We'll have to see what happens with it in the future, but as it currently stands, it is very strong. Uh, top ten trip in the entire game. Best man accumulator we've gotten in, like, five years, so very high up there. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Feel free to leave a like on the video. Helps a lot and is greatly appreciated. I'll catch all you guys later. Goodbye, everyone. Have a wonderful week.